So my name is Matt Wallert, and I'm a social psychologist. And a few years ago, I was the lead scientist at a behavioral finance company, which gave me access to a lot of people's bank transactions and let me generate cool graphs like these. This top graph is the raw dollars saved by men and women each month. And if you looked just at this graph, you would think men were amazing savers and women needed to buy fewer shoes. <laughs> but as Max Schroen just told you, critical thinking matters. This bottom graph is the same savings data presented as a function of income. So for every $100 that you earn, what percent goes into a savings account? Women are actually fantastic savers, given how much they make. On average, in the United States, women are underpaid by about 25%. Taken across all the employed women, that's $400 billion a year, or roughly the budget of the Army and Navy combined. This was a real problem for our company, because women don't need budgeting. The average woman could stop eating and not make as much, be able to save as much as the average man. Right? And that's not eating out, that's eating at all. <laughs> So what do you do when your data shows you a problem? You use data to try and solve it. So we created something called Get Raised, and the title should tell you what it does. And the reason we're talking about it tonight is because it's really just data made into a product. Right? It's not persuasive or educational like an infographic. It's a specific tool with a specific behavioral outcome. Help women ask for and get raises. So how do you get women to ask for a raise? Well, you tell them that they're underpaid. The problem is, the government data for this is organized into job categories that sound nothing like the job titles that you and I actually have. So how do we get from your job to this government data? What we did is we took those categories, we started scraping job postings for associated words, and we curated that down. So now that we know that something like data scientist actually means this weird government category. Right? So now I know what you do, but how much should you be paid? Are you underpaid? We get a once a year snapshot from the Bureau of Labor Statistics, but that's not nearly enough. So we're out there scraping job postings continually so that we have benchmarks in your community. And we've created a virtuous cycle, right? Because every time you come in and tell me what you do and how much you make, that's a data point that I can use for the next person that comes in. So now I know you're underpaid, but how much of a raise should you ask for? Is a 50% raise too much. So what we did is we actually went out and asked hundreds of HR people from companies big and small about different kinds of raise requests, which let us generate a graph that looks something like this. I'm speaking fast, hey, all right. So you can see at 4%, you get an almost automatic yes. 20%, you get an almost automatic no. So we can use these inflection points at 4, 8, and 12% to let people trade off the likelihood of getting a raise versus how much they're asking for. So how do we know if it works? We needed another feedback loop. So as soon as you print your letter, we start following up with you automatically. The system says, did you hand it in? Did you schedule a meeting? How'd the meeting go? Because anytime we're trying to change behavior, we should be finding out if we're actually doing it, right? And in this case, it worked. So 70% of the women that hand in a raise request get a raise. The average raise is $6,500, which means that the women that we've helped so far over the next 35 years will earn an extra $300 million. So that's Get Raised, and it's completely free, and it's awesome, but it's just an example of what I want to talk about tonight which is that data doesn't just have to be a way of monitoring what's happening in the world. It can be a way of changing it. If we start with a behavior that we want to see, and we work backwards to a product and the data that actually creates that behavior, data can be our product. So I'm not saying don't create the infographic that you know, shows you where all the trees in New York City are, right? But when you're knee deep in that data, you're one step away from a tool that tells kids who have allergy-related asthma where the best places to live are, right? You can use your data to change the world. Imagine a world in which all the data scientists in this room spend more time solving social problems with data than we did building behavioral ad networks, right? I want to live in that world. I think you want to live in that world. Let's live in it together. 
Thank you for your attention.